the fourth theory is poverty caused by geographical disparities or the differences in locations. Different people who are located differently will have different income. Yeah, and this asserts that poverty is most intense in certain areas due to things like disinvestment, the areas which discourage investors from coming there. For example, where you say it is ever affected by what? By rainfall. There is cheetahs, it is a very dirty place, it oversmells, so it discourages investment. Then proximity to natural resources. Some areas are far away from natural resources, which d discourages production and innovation. And some areas are so near to what? Natural resources. For example, the people who live around Lake Victoria, they can easily access natural resources. Yeah, then there is density and then diffusion of innovation. When innovation comes, it first hits urban areas. Yeah, it's it's what it's it's people in the urban areas who get the la the the latest phones first, who get everything good first before it reaches to the villages. So it causes poverty according to geographic disparities or the differences in locations of the people. So let's look at the anti-poverty programs from geographical perspective. First is improving local industry competitiveness through cluster development. So if they increase the competitiveness of local industry, the industries that are in rural areas, it will increase their production and it will in the long run increase on their income, which will help to reduce poverty. Another one is enterprise zoning, redevelopment and other tax-based incentive programs for economic development. You give in incentives to, to, to people who set up businesses in local areas in order for them to be encouraged to set up businesses. And then another way is inclusionary zoning, affordable housing and similar programs that place conditions on development. You put commercial houses in the, in the villages that are affordable so that people can carry out business to reduce on poverty so that they can be able to earn something. Then another point is downtown revitalization and civic improvements that increase amenities and make areas more attractive, hoping to stimulate employment and tax revenues. For, for example, the downtown in Kampala, if they re re renovate it, if they build it, if they, if they make it look more attractive, attractive it will attract customers which will in turn will increase in the income of the people who work from there another way is infrastructure development including things like parks water waste disposal schools and other public facilities will encourage investment in such areas like the rural areas or it will encourage the local people to start up businesses which will in turn help to reduce on what poverty then community organizing, if communities are organized and they have things like circles, they can be able to collect money from themselves and they start up businesses for each other. So it can also help to reduce on poverty based on geography. Then uh, lastly is national and regional reinvestment that shifts funds from one area. Yes, so national and regional investment, they say to invest in a particular area to develop it.